I saw that in 23C, someone can have a higher priority for a lock on a table, in fact, a, a table row. What happens when two different priorities are competing for the same lock? I went back and forth with this customer a little bit more to actually understand what they were talking about. And so in by way of background, in 23C, when you compete for a row or compete for a resource, by default, you know, like all versions of the database, everyone has the same priority. But sometimes that's not what we want. And in 23C, there are actually three priorities we have on offer. There's low, medium, and high. So I'll show you the standard example we've been doing first so you understand how the facility works. And then we'll see an interesting byproduct of because of the fact that you have multiple priorities. So let's give that a go. To demonstrate this feature in its base format, right? And this is a really cool feature because it, it reflects the real world. Let me do a simple demo. I'm gonna create a user here called Lazy Connor. Now that's me. And we'll get to why I'm lazy shortly. And I've got another user here called Daily Payroll Batch, the program that runs to pay all the employees in your organization. Would you like to have a guess who's more important in this organization, Lazy Connor or the Daily Payroll Run? So they're both gonna have access to the scott.emp table. And let's now create some problems. I connect as Lazy Connor and I'm lazy, so I do an update on a row. I update employee 7369, and because I'm lazy, I look at the watch, I go, you know, it's time for lunch, and out I go. And of course, what have I forgotten to do? I haven't ended that transaction. So let's flick over to session number two. I've gone to lunch, and just after lunch, the daily payroll needs to run. And as you'd imagine, a daily payroll run is a batch program and will need exclusive access probably to all the rows in the employee table. So they come on, and in this case, I'm just doing one particular row, but it could be all the rows. I've done for update no way there, because as we know, because of lazy Connor who's gone to lunch, I can't get a lock. So no matter what happens, the daily batch run has now just crashed because of some guy who forgot to commit his transaction. That's very frustrating. So let's roll that back. Let's see how we solve this in 23C. In 23C, we can have these parameters. In this case, I'm setting the auto, this is one of the longest parameters you'll ever see, TXN auto rollback high priority target, weight target equals 20. G'day future Connor here. Just to jump into the video for a second, we realize those parameter names are perhaps a little on the long side and hard to remember. So we've renamed them in an updated release of 23. You can now use priority transactions, high weight target, and similar for the other levels. Anyway, back to the video. Now, the, the name of the parameter isn't too important, but let's come back. Let's remember that 20, that's critical here. Let's now redo the demo. I connect as lazy Connor, and I'm still lazy, so this time now, because I'm just your average user, I'm gonna change my priority. I'm gonna say, for me, this session, my transaction priority is low because I'm not an important person in this organization. And as we've seen, I'm a risky person because I go to lunch without committing my transactions. So once again, I lock the same row. And once again, I think, ah, oh, it's afternoon tea time. I'll go grab a coffee. This time the batch run comes on. It says, now I'm an important session, right? Because as you imagine, daily payroll is a pretty important thing. Let's turn timing on and start doing this update. Now, as you can see, a couple of things to note here. Number one is, even though I'm a low priority, Nothing stopped me from getting this lock. I could still get that lock. It didn't stop normal operation. And over here, I still have to wait for the lock. It's not like because I'm a high priority, I just managed to get locks no matter what. I have to wait because we're hopeful that Lazy Connor will actually do the right thing and commit. But the key thing here is notice the amount of time it took. Eventually, I got the lock. And how long did it take to get the lock? 20 seconds. You can still now see what that parameter value means. If I'm a high priority transaction and I'm trying to get a lock from someone with a lower priority transaction lock, then I'll wait up to 20 seconds before I will just take over. Right? And that's pretty cool because I wanted this to happen. The daily payroll should not be impacted by lower priority people. If this person managed to get a lock, what happened to Lazy Connor? Well, we killed them. Very simple, right? That's how it works. If you're a high priority session and a low priority session has got your lock, we terminate that session in order to release its lock. P1 cleans it up and then I can get the lock. G'day future Connor again. Just to let you know in a release update, we've also made this a bit more flexible. You can choose to kill the session or you can choose just to roll back their currently active transaction and leave their session intact. 
that new availability is the default in 23 AI. Back to the video. So I think this is a very cool facility. The question that came in relates to what happens when you have a mix. So let's introduce a third person. So we got Lazy Connor, the Daily Payroll, and now we've got Sleepy Tom. So we've got three people. As you can imagine, Lazy Connor, low priority person, Sleepy Tom, probably not as important as the Daily Payroll. He also gets access to the Scott.emp table. I'm gonna go in as a DBA again and set the medium priority. Now in this case, the medium priority weight target is 10. Go with me here, this is a bit counterintuitive. You might think the high priority target would be lower than the medium, but I'm going here to see what happens when we start having a, a clash between who should take priority. So the medium weight is 10 seconds, the high priority weight is 20 seconds. In this window, I'm gonna connect as Lazy Connor. I'm still a low priority and I take a lock. I'm gonna connect in session three now as Sleepy Tom. Sleepy Tom has a priority of medium and medium's wait time is 10 seconds. So we'll turn on timing here, right? Now I need to go to session two once this starts. I've got Sleepy Tom who's prepared to wait up to 10 seconds for a lock. I've got the daily payroll who's prepared to wait up to 20 seconds for a lock. And I've got Connor who took the lock and shouldn't have. Here's the interesting thing. This person should have waited up to 10 seconds and then taken over because that's their priority. This person should have waited up to 20 seconds and then taken over. But look what happened. After lick just a fraction of a second, they got priority. The high person took priority. Now, unfortunately, if we actually added up, it was the time I took to change over. It was actually eight seconds spent here talking to you, followed by two seconds. This is not documented, but my observation is, what I'm seeing is, is that when you have medium and high both competing against someone who locked the roles are low, then the person who has the high priority wins. When effectively medium or high, they both sort of hit some timeout, the lowest timeout, and they go, okay, who's waiting? Highest gets it. And so the high wins out no matter what. And as you can see, our sleepy Tom here is still actually stuck. He's actually still waiting. He's never taken over the high priority person. So we'll commit them, which would actually then free up this person, et cetera, and we're all done. But yeah, an interesting scenario when you have multiple levels all competing for the same resource. Thank you.